Hi folks, welcome to this week's demo. Today we're going to talk about making and using templates on your woodworking projects. Now, templates can help you do three main things. First, they can help you trace complex shapes, like this green and green bed rail, onto your project parts quickly and easily. And once you've got the template, you don't have to lay all of this out again manually. Then you can use your templates to actually make your project parts with a router and the right bits. And finally, you can keep your templates for possible reuse, and that can save a lot of layout time down the road if you should decide to make the project again. Let's start by talking about the templates I like to use. Now sometimes I make my rigid templates from cardboard patterns, like these sold by Rockler for this English garden bench. And other times I'll enlarge a gridded drawing from a published plan onto paper. But then, how do you go from the cardboard or paper pattern to this. Well, here are some tips for how I make the rigid templates. First of all, when you're making rigid templates, you've got some material choices. My favorites are quarter inch MDF and quarter inch plywood. Both of these are relatively inexpensive if you mess them up, and that sometimes happens. And they have reasonably durable edges. And bright plywood like this makes it really easy to see your layout lines when you're laying out your template and cutting it out. But don't make your templates from 3 quarter inch solid wood like this. It's harder to cut this out accurately and to refine the edges by sanding. Now if you're starting with a cardboard pattern like this, obviously the first step is going to be to carefully trace it onto your template blank. If you're tracing onto MDF as I am here, I like to use a black fine tipped marker rather than a pencil. I think it's a lot easier to see your layout lines this way. And if you're starting your rigid template from a paper pattern like this, buy a can of spray mount adhesive. You can find this at any hardware store or home center in the adhesive section. Spray your template blank down with a light coating of the adhesive and carefully stick your paper pattern to it. And if your pattern includes straight lines, like this one does, lay it out on your template material to take advantage of those straight lines if you can. You can see here that by laying out my pattern along the straight edge and end of this template blank, I've already got two nice straight lines of my template taken care of. But if I had laid it out this way, for instance, I'd have to cut out every single straight line. Don't work any harder than you have to. Now go ahead and cut your template out. Take your time and cut as close to your layout lines as possible. This is where accuracy is really important. But give yourself a little room outside of the layout lines to refine the shape off the saw. And if you can use a fence on your saw to help make sure that straight lines come out perfectly straight on your template, by all means, do that. And now it's time to refine the template's shapes. And if my templates have curves, most of that work happens here at my spindle sander. I try to use the largest diameter drum I can because I find that it leaves fewer divots in the edges of my templates and it also makes really broad curves easier to sand. This is also the time when you're going to be glad that you didn't use overly thick material for your templates because the more material you have to remove, the more difficult it is to sand accurately. Whatever sander you use, work very gently to refine the edges of your template. Don't force the sander to remove a lot of material in any one spot and keep the template moving. Work in light, smooth, and controlled passes here. And after the sanding is done, your template's ready to go. But here's one last tip. If you've got some finish you want to use up, put a coat of it on your template. It can be any film forming finish you have on hand. Shellac, varnish, lacquer, doesn't really matter. The finish will help prevent double sided tape from lifting fibers up out of the template material and it also makes the tape residue easier to remove. This is one good way to help your templates last longer and after all the effort you put into making them, I think it's well worth it. Here's another tip when it comes to using templates. Sometimes the stock you need to cut is thicker than your longest pattern cutting router bit. This happened to me recently when I was building a garden bench. 
Let me show you how I solved that challenge. And to start with, you're going to need a long bit. This double bearing flush trim bit I'm going to be using from Rockler has an inch and a half long cutting capacity. So with the bit raised all the way up so this bottom bearing will make contact with my template on the bottom of the leg work piece, I'm going to remove the top bearing and washer and now effectively this bit with a bearing only on the bottom becomes a pattern bit. With the leg oriented so the template is facing down, trim off as much waste as the bit will reach using its full cutting length and feeding the blank counterclockwise. Go slowly to minimize tear out, especially where the bit is cutting against the grain. We're halfway done, but what about this waste area that's still left? Well, you don't have to take the template off the bottom and move it over to the other side to make another pass this way. Instead, flip the leg blank over so the waste material is now on the bottom and reinstall the top bearing on the bit so this time it can act like a flush trim bit. Lower the bit height as necessary to make sure the bottom bearing is no longer in contact with the leg. Then remove the rest of the waste in a second routing pass to finish up the leg profile. Repeat this two-bit process to clean up the second back leg as well. Now if you don't have a long double bearing flush trim bit like this one, you can use a standard flush trim and pattern bit if those are the bits you own. Just make sure that their maximum cutting length reaches at least halfway across these blanks and you're going to have to change bits between one cut and the other. Templates bring accuracy and efficiency to part making that's hard to beat. And once you try them for yourself, I'll bet they'll become a regular part of your project building. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine, and thanks for watching.